Whoa-ho-ho! I see, I was out here to start a vlog. But of course, it's gotta be construction, right? Gotta be construction. So, um, I'm off. This is a vlogish type of situation we're gonna do here. I'm off to go get lunch. I'm going to Chinatown, in fact, today. But along the way, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna cover this topic. Uh, where is the web stack going to be within five years? This is a question put to me. All right, I'm off to get some dim sum. If you don't know what that is, look it up on the web. Chinese dim sum, one of my uh, favorite foods. But one of my favorite foods, dim sum. Always use chopsticks. All right, I'm in downtown Montreal. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to say anything. I don't like the idea of vlogging. It's kind of a little embarrassing. But this camera is kind of small, so I guess I can get away with it. I think the number one thing about modern day web development that we're going to see in five years from now is that the languages that we see now are pretty much baked into the cake. I don't see any new languages replacing the leaders now, which is JavaScript, Python, PHP, Java, C Sharp, .NET, to a lesser extent Ruby. And the reason I don't see them being replaced over the next five years is simply because they're very good. They're all very good, they're all very productive. And with computers getting faster and faster, I don't see where you would need more, uh, more efficient languages or faster languages. But that is becoming a non-issue. And again, these, live, these, these uh, languages are very mature. They have mature frameworks. They're not going to be replaced anytime soon. So yeah, in the next five years, I think if you pick any of the major languages today, JavaScript, Java, Python, Ruby, PHP, etc., etc., I don't see them being replaced in terms of the web stack anytime soon. So, what about the web frameworks? I'm talking the front end frameworks. Where do I see that going next five years? That's more difficult to predict because web frameworks are uh, more volatile. If you recall, not exactly a framework, but about five, six years ago, jQuery was it. Everybody was pro jQuery, anti vanilla JS, and the uh, scripts have switched, of course. jQuery is still widely used, but it's more or less a background technology. It's fading more and more and more and more. And that's just the nature of these uh, libraries that you see. So it's hard to predict. That being said, the leaders now are React, Angular, and uh, Vue.js. I think Vue.js has a lot of growth ahead of it because of the nature of Vue, light, nimble, easy to learn. But React is very much entrenched. And I see Angular in its various forms more or less used in the enterprise segment. I think Java, .NET type of development. Um, I'm not saying Angular is related to them in terms of technology, I'm saying they're related in terms of use case, meaning large organizations. I think though, uh, what you'll see, my best guess, barring any new uh, framework coming into the game, or some new disruptive technology, I think in terms of the front end frameworks, I think you're gonna see React and Vue are gonna be two dominant players followed by uh, Angular. Uh, either way, you can't lose with any of them. Um, again, this is a prime example why I always tell people, learn your fundamentals, frameworks change, uh, libraries change, but the fundamentals don't change. And uh, so that's the only thing that sticks with you over a long period of time. It served me very well, the strategy by the way. So there you go, that's my take on in five years, what front-end frameworks are going to be and which ones you should be concerned with.
All right, next installment. Another thing which you're going to see more and more in terms of uh, web development and freelancing and so forth, you see a move more and more of the complexities of web development to the server. You're seeing more and more sophisticated server tools that are pretty mind-blowing from an old nerd's perspective. So I'll give you one example. Virtualized database management that you now see. We're actually going to be leveraging this very soon for Studio Web, where instead of having to worry about uh, sharding your database and database optimizations, the uh, advanced hosting companies, they provide that for you. They take care of that scaling, auto backups, all this kind of stuff that normally you would have to do yourself. You'd have to work into the development cycle. Not anymore. And you're going to see more and more of this type of offloading of complexity in terms of application design and architecture. So you're going to see offloading of this complexity more onto uh, sophisticated hosting solutions. And it gets really advanced when you start looking at AWS. And I see that DigitOcean is getting into it to a certain level. So that trend is just going to continue, which is a good thing. You know, so you don't, you, will not have to worry so much about scaling an app, architecting your app for scaling, as long as you just satisfy the um, basic requirements of the hosting company. So that's another trend you're going to see in web development over the next five years, that uh, obfuscation of the complexity, which is a good thing. So the last thing I want to comment on in terms of where web development is going over the next five years I think it's going to shift more from day-to-day -day nuts and bolts type of coding and it's going, to go, it's going to go more into architectural. So let me give you a couple of examples to illustrate my point. So for example, back in the 1990s um, when a small business or any business want to put up a website, every page was put up manually. You had to put up a new HTML page for a new subject. If somebody needed to update a page, they needed to get a coder in there to go in there, update, update the HTML, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what people use in that situation is a content management system. The most popular one out there, of course, is WordPress, which has given the rise of the WordPress professional. WordPress professionals know how to install, configure WordPress, know the uh, environment around WordPress, the ecosystem. So you know what the themes are, what are good themes, bad themes, the good plugins, the bad plugins, how to install, how to debug, how to lock down, secure WordPress, etc. Configuration. It's a whole skill set. Now, to do all this, you don't need to necessarily be a coder, that's for sure. Having coding skills does help, but that's just one simple example of uh, web design development shifting towards architectural skills. So, and you can't discount this, these type of skills. It's, it's not trivial. So for example, one of my developers who's got a master's degree in computer science, excellent, excellent, excellent developer. And I said, we've got some downtime, uh, just uh, we've got to install this WordPress project for some satellite project I had going on the side. And I had him work on it and it, it, was, it was not good because he didn't understand WordPress and he was messing things up and it was just, it was just bad, it was just bad. It was outside of his scope of knowledge and uh, so I took him off the job because uh, it was just wasn't what he could do. And maybe he didn't want to do it, I'm not sure, but it was just, the point is that it wasn't such an easy thing. So today we have, as an example, the rise of the WordPress developer, you know. It's uh, much, very little about code in that circumstances, but you got to really know your stuff. Uh, for example, people who are React, React coders, they're writing code but they're leveraging a framework. They're leveraging this React uh, library, this framework, which has a huge impact in terms of things. Instead of having to do things from scratch, you use React, et cetera, et cetera. I could go on for a while, but this is a trend that's been going on for a while. The move away from nuts and bolts coding to be some, being somebody who leverages different libraries and frameworks and understands how to use them, when to use them, how to, you know, uh, what circumstances use them. So there you go. I think that is the last trend. I think we're going to see much more of this as we move forward uh, over the next five years. Does that mean that coding is going to go away? No, it's just going to shift. It's here now. It's going to go to here. 
and later on it's going to go to here just as, as it has in the past. A simple example I use is um, back in the early days and 90s just being able to create a date picker tool within a website was a pain in the uh, butt that's for sure. These days it's trivial whether you use a jQuery date picker or you use a uh, HTML5 date picker whatever it is it's easy to do now but again this is you as a coder understanding oh, I'll just use a date picker object boom done so what happens is a good developer is going to be spending more time in architecture than they will be writing code or, or might be a different mix anyway it's hard to say it depends on the type of coding you're going to do and so on but that's where I think it's going to go and it's just a natural progression of things and that's how it is and again like I said things that we used to have to do in the 1990s and early 2000s there was a lot of coding a lot of coding now you don't do that anymore you just you know you just drop in uh, you can use the core languages now but you know at one point for example bootstrap came in made it really easy to develop uh, CSS based layouts with bootstrap bootstrap the framework took care of all kinds of details so you just leverage bootstrap with minor coding involved whereas before we had to do a lot more tedious CSS uh, coding and even before that a lot more uh, tedious JavaScript coding to get the same result now you use bootstrap but that's changing again thank God CSS grid CSS flex flexbox that allows you to uh, uh, to take care of your uh, website UIs uh, without necessarily having to go to Bootstrap. I'm not saying Bootstrap's out of it, but it's going to, I would imagine, fade since uh, CSS Grid and uh, Flexbox are more widely supported. So there you go. That's how I see things going in the future in terms of a uh, little less code, more architecture. That's all cool.